Hello and welcome back. We are here continuing the USA run. Last episode, uh, we fully unified kind of the borders as well as recovering from both the war with Mexico as well as the Civil War. Um, you might notice this date is not quite exactly where we left off. That's because my coming back kind of reorganizing the, the run uh, type of intro uh, was the audio on it was muted because my mic had become unplugged uh and so we're continuing on now though um and the goal of this run is to get half a billion pops however uh china is not cooperating see what we need is them to go heavenly kingdom and they're not they're not cooperating one bit um we need them to acquire a bunch of turmoil in order to spark this and as you can see they don't have very much turmoil because they revved and got rid of all the turmoil and they are not ching proper they are the revolutionary ching and so we're gonna have to end up fighting them and so what this episode is probably going to largely be is us kind of increasing our power base we do want to get up to 1k construction but also reorganizing the army greatly you can see we've started to reorganize the army we're producing a whole bunch of defensive 10 stacks i think out of these 10 stacks we're gonna distribute a lot of our mobilization um kind of as our general strategy uh and so we are going to be getting ready to fight ching i think we want to build up a little bit more of a power base before we go after them uh they do have line infantry they do have quite a big uh you know strong and scary army and I'm not sure we want to fight them head on because I don't think we want to enforce on them. And we want to make sure we have a bigger line of credit because this war is going to be expensive. We don't want to enforce on them. Instead, what we want to do is take basically every place but the capital and then just sit on them for an extended period of time or try and release subjects from them in such a way that the capital becomes isolated. This is both the market as well as the physical capital. Uh, you can see here's the, all the market arrows. Um, uh, but we are hoping... We are hope, hope, hoping uh, that we can uh, cause enough turmoil to provoke the uh, the heavenly kingdom in some way. They have some Protestants. I don't know if they have enough Protestants in order to spark this. You can see here there are some Protestants, especially down here. We will not be releasing UA because this is where all the Protestant pops are. And hopefully we can get something done. Uh, I'm not really sure. But uh, the big key thing here is that uh, the heavenly kingdom has open borders and Qing has closed borders, and in order to fully, fully, fully pop off, it will help a lot if we can get them onto open borders. Uh so we're probably not going to have the absolute fastest half billion pops, but this is still going to be the goal for the run. Secondary thing is when the UK annexes these internal guys here, the UK generally has open borders. So if the UK eventually annexes Hyberdad, for example, we can get mass migrations from them. So this is probably going to be a source of, um, you know, migration for us sometime down the road. Alternatively, we could try to maybe even release these guys from the UK. Maybe this is the strategy. In any case, we will need to prep the army for this, I think. I think it was in the other intro that got scuffed, but something we are keen on doing is, in terms of research, uh, we are actually going rubber mastication. We pulled uh, around our research quite a bit. We're kind of a little bit schizophrenic with this, to be honest. And what we are doing is, okay, we're going to finish not spreading this, and we're going to be able to get this for 12k, kind of like right on time. And then after this, we'll go into dynamite. But the idea here is that we have a company, and it's a wood and rubber company. Wood is ridiculously insane for depeasanting, and this is why we've been leaning into the wood because it's not that we really care about it being the absolute best in terms of making money. What we are trying to do because we're trying to run the population up so much is we're trying to give people jobs so that we can de-peasant as quickly as possible so that we can have as much unused arable land as possible for the migration modifiers and because uh, we're trying to run up the number and a huge amount of it comes from unused arable land. And, and wood is going to be the very best for us to be able to do this because it is capitalist owned and only costs 200 construction so we are really over building wood and i just like to emphasize this if we look at our trade routes and we look at uh which ones are costing us the most convoys uh yeah it's exporting of hardwood because in all of our hardwood places we're using the hardwood pm because well obviously we want to be efficient and that's a hardwood output a bonus but we're also exporting a pretty big chunk of just regular wood uh as well and so this is going to uh account for a lot of our convoys what I'm thinking we do is we just absolutely blitz out kind of the rest of the wood in the continental USA. Uh, basically every place where we don't have a construction malice, but even over here possibly because we have 30% construction bonus uh, that we are getting from our company and we have a relatively high police and we're incorporating a lot of this stuff. And then we swap out the wood company. 
And it's wood and rubber, so I was thinking we'd do the same thing with the rubber, and then we say goodbye to the company, and then we switch gears, and we start, you know, recomping our economy, so there's not so disgustingly, like, overbalanced towards wood as it needs to be to be able to be doing something like this. Uh, like, if we look at our goods prices, uh, wood's at minus 8%. Which is not, like, disgustingly, disgustingly cheap. Uh, but the hardwood, I'm guessing, is... Ooh, the hardwoods... Is it really not even cheaper? Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy that the hardwood is actually more expensive. I was expecting it to be cheaper. Anyways, well, we have that ridiculous trade route. But this is going to be the idea in terms of both the tech and the companies that we're kind of moving forward with. So we already demarginalized the trade unions through cheese, but we just finished natural spreading labor movement. So I'm curious to see, normally you have to research labor movement before you can demarginalize these guys. But I'm curious to see how much the clout goes up just off the back of this initial salvo here. So we're going to see this together on the next Sunday tick. We're expecting a little bit of a jump. I guess it wasn't that big a jump. All right, fair enough. Well, they are demarginalized, and so that is going to be spectacular for us. Uh, and with this will also allow us to, you know, get rid of child labor to some extent, which is going to be pretty good for us overall. Um, because we love education. We could also pass regulatory bodies here if we would so inclined, but I think we're just going to um, go restrict to child labor here because everyone loves it. Also, just wanted to point out, um, this. Uh, I think that we created this situation two episodes ago. Um, we demarginalized these guys by doing the uh, resign from office slash abdicate trick uh, with everyone in government uh, and these guys marginalized and it gave everyone minus 90 percent clout which allowed these guys to come on out and we're currently in the situation where the industrialists want in we only have one party if the industrialists were in we wouldn't be that legitimate but since they're out we're hyper legitimate and this is just we get to pass kind of every law we want we get to float an authority excess and it's not a big deal and we're just in extraordinarily good shape off the back of this in terms of politically we're just getting past kind of everything we want and um things are things are nice except for the industrialist. But man, the industrialist, we got a reformer boy on now. And so he's actually happy about passing these getting these school laws. So that's also spectacular for us. A big part of us maintaining high legitimacy, even in the face of, you know, high taxes. Yeah, let's 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 go high taxes again. Uh, is of course the uh, Forbidden City, which a big part of why we want the Forbidden City or wanted the Forbidden City was also to deny uh, the legitimacy from including the head of state and government. Normally, this is plus 20. Uh, we wanted to deny it to Ching with the hopes that they would be more likely to go Heavenly Kingdom. But unfortunately, they just, you know, normal revved. Okay, their cloud is just steadily climbing here. Um, you can see here, it's much more robust uh, a figure here. Very important to get that tech to demarginalize them. We also finish... Uh, this tech here, mechanized workshops, which means it's just going to be another 14 weeks to this. And very quickly off the back of that, are we going to get dynamite? I think after the dynamite, though, we come for the vulcanization, which is the payoff for the rubber. Uh, but we want to get started on rubber production right away before we slot out the company. A really nice aspect of having massive migration interaction off the back of our unused arable land. And of course, we did pass public schools and we're looking to crank it up to max. A big advantage of this is your annexing cost is going to be based on population uh, or the cost of all your diplo plays in terms of infamy since we've gotten cape colony into the country you can see their population is going down because we have so much migration attraction they're just all splitting and coming you know to america which is big nice for us because this means we'll get to annex these guys for much cheaper later on so we are really starting to pop off quite a bit here um we our economy is about to hit a gdp of 100 million you can see this kind of pop off this is a combination of trade and new pms that are really uh popping off on that but also this incoming extra population as we get rid of the peasants it's easier for us to pull in migrants and as more of these areas are becoming incorporated it's giving us more mass migration and attraction because this is diluting out the very unfavorable northeast uh in terms of speaking about our average so if we take a look here in the little ledger which is notoriously hard to click because uh for whatever reason sometimes it doesn't click the way you want it to you can see now we're far and away have the most mass migration attraction with 90 and this is the usa's really really big strength we're also coming in and uh reforming the army and we're making it uh we're trying to stack everything up so that we have these big uh these defensive stacks which are the blue ones um these pushing stacks which are half and half arty and infantry which are going to be good as well i think that's 15 15 yeah uh and then we also have um 
this one stack here, which is storing all of the extra conscripts. Eventually what we'll do is we'll delete all the conscripts from here and redistribute them to the pushing stacks um, from specific key areas. Like you can see here, we're talking Washington, Oregon, and et al. Uh, and so these states here, we're just gonna put all the conscripts of them in here. And I think if you compartmentalize the conscripts, you don't get the conscript bug where it raises conscripts in one army if you raise them in another. And so this is the hope, uh, but we're not going to reassign all that there. We're just kind of prepping uh, some templates and this sort of thing. Also, the construction, as you can see, is flying up. Uh, we are adding construction in some very key places. Uh, we have seen, if you if we zoom in, you can see a lot of the places where we have already added it are going to be the places where we have coal and iron already, uh, except for the kind of newly acquired Montana. We don't have too many in Montana yet because we haven't built that out yet. And we have put a level one in several other places that have a iron plus X, that X by being either sulfur or coal, these will be our secondary expanding places. And in a sort of way, we are tagging them by building just a single construction sector there, knowing that uh, they will be reasonable for, uh, you know, kind of this expansion, especially um, these ones will be really good with explosives. And so they'll be pretty good on the mapping front. You can see the wood really starting to be expanded out. We have, I think, quite a bit more of it in the queue. We do want to slot out the company kind of soon-ish. Um, we're just going to probably Probably do it after we discover at least a little bit more rubber and switch on to the tools that are going to be rubber tools um, and so this is the plan but really really coming along quite nicely building a foundation here and getting ready to challenge uh, Ching we could probably beat Ching in a war right now but what we want to do is we want well maybe we can't even do that but what we want to do is we want to really bleed them for a long time Another thing that uh, is also coming up for us is we just discovered ironclads, so we're going to upgrade these, build a few more ironclads, really make sure we have a much stronger navy than Great Ching. That way we are free to operate and we do have a much stronger military, or sorry, navy rather, than Great Ching, which will leave us free to kind of abuse them in terms of, um, you know, uh, strategic regions. Unfortunately, maybe liberating Manchuria was a mistake because now we can't operate in Manchuria strategic region it's only north and south China and so it would help if we got some other area of ingress and maybe it's going after Dainam or going after Portugal for Macau something like this but this is what we're working towards um, at least in this episode here so we just pulled New Granada into the customs union and they went from overall having net positive weekly migration to having net negative really hoping to siphon them down here uh, they slurped off a lot of pops kind of earlier in the run and they got a much higher pop than they normally have uh, you can see here like towards the beginning they got some mass migration and we're really hoping to bring this down to size um, hoping to change the trajectory here make it negative that way going after them and subjugating them is a little bit easier because as a secondary thing you know Monroe Doctrine and all that we would like to subjugate or control all of the Americas um, in the long term and so uh, to that end uh, we're gonna go for that I don't think we talked about Amazonia we did go after Amazonia as well I don't think we talked about it too much but amazonia is one of the very most resource dense like releasables um they don't have the most resources they don't have like more than perm but on a per infamy basis it might actually be the most resource dense area uh you see here 27 logging camps 25 rubber 17 iron uh in here 32 logging 20 rubber and then here uh you have 22 rubber 78 iron mines and they're not just regular iron mines they are iron mine throughput iron mines and we do have amazonas uh uh, with the hardwood output that's not throughput that's output on all three of these and on Mato Grasso we also have you know the agricultural stuff and if I'm not mistaken Mato Grasso doesn't have too too much yeah they have a decent number of arable land uh, but this is what we're working with and it's just a very very small amount of infamy because infamy is based on pop you can see we captured them and when we captured them their pop started decreasing so they'll be even cheaper later on uh, but this is uh, if you're if you can fight Brazil really easily um, and you want to have have someone who's relatively low in for me to go for releasing them from Brazil for the purposes of taking them is a pretty solid go. So this is going to be a theme that's going to be coming up quite a lot that makes me think that maybe I have just been super super sleeping on peasant levies. Now peasant levies is a huge pain in the ass or sorry national militia rather. National militia is a pain in the ass because you can only get five uh, you know uh, regulars per level. However we have this this here this 1k stack which we pay nothing for. Now, it's not a real stack. We wouldn't really raise this 984 conscripts thing. But what it does is it allows you to shake your shake your thing at the enemy, and the enemy just, you know, in the presence of your overwhelming thing, 
will just be willing to give you just about anything. Uh, and this is what we have been doing to the likes of the UK. Uh, we have this fat, fat bankroll that we've been getting kind of for a while now from, uh, what is it, uh, from France. And this is based on our income. So as our income gets bigger, uh, this gets even bigger, bigger. You know what I mean? It's that thing. And we can ask for transfer just about any subject from the UK. But I think what we're going to ask for, I think what we're going to ask for is the thing that's going to collapse them, which is going to be asking for, we could also ask for transfer states. Look at this. These aren't even like, uh, this is just an absolute spread of almost anything we could ask for here. You know, it's basically, is it incorporated? If no, uh, you can have it. Please don't hurt us. <laughs> no estas listo for this heat, for that thing. And so um, I think what we're going to ask for is actually a bankroll because it's going to stick in for a while and it's going to give us ticking positive relations with the UK. Big nice. The only, actually, maybe let's not ask for it because I think that when we side against the UK, it might break the bankroll. So when we do this reverse sway, when we do this yo-yo thing where we join first with uh, whoever it is, it doesn't matter, so that they are willing to give anything. Right now they won't, it, or the base is that they won't give anything. But when we side with the other side, they're like, nah, I don't want that heat. And so, um, I think we go for this bankroll, though. Because then we'll be able to really, really crank construction a whole, whole lot. And then they'll also have a really pleasant attitude towards us. So now they're like, oh, man, you know what? We were almost dead, but you, you, sir, are our savior. And so this is why we have a genial attitude towards you. You're the best, America. So we are notably also here um, making a ton of money now for no re good reason. In fact, I think we actually just decreased taxes a notch uh, and maybe pull this. Now, let's just leave that in there for now. But what I wanted to talk about is we're bankrolling a few countries now looking to expand the customs union. In New Granada, for example, we talked about we did pull them into the customs union. And we are seeing that. Now that we take a look later, their population is starting to dip, which is perfect. Um, I think that we will just uh, do coercion uh, in that event. But we are going to be trying to pull uh, Persia into the customs union so we can siphon off their population. Uh, and then in doing so, make it cheaper for us to take Persia. And then we're also going to uh, look to pull uh, Ottoman Empire into the customs union because they have... Uh, they are the, as far as unrecognized powers go, uh, they are going to be the biggest unrecognized country that has no migration controls. A lot of these other countries, they have changed to have migration controls, and this is really the crux of, you know, trying to do this run whole idea, uh, is we trying to figure out a way to open the borders of China in order to, like, let the floodgates in. But even without the floodgates, even without the floodgates, we're still doing pretty hot in terms of the population. It's really starting to kick off. A big part of this is the logging uh, that's getting unleashed. We are getting kind of close-ish uh, to fully having... Uh, we're just, like, now we're just... The, the amount of logging we're putting in is obscene. We've exhausted a lot of the logging here in North America anyways. Um, it's really... Uh, probably just like too much uh but the idea is is okay we're gonna make our economy disgustingly unbalanced while we have this construction bonus um you know and then uh with this and we really have to build a lot of glass that's why we have it in the queue um and then when we swap it off we won't be as so unbalanced and these roots will decrease in size and it will allow our other roots to kind of pick up the slack our economy is so disgustingly unbalanced. We just took a quick look at our uh, kind of normal clothing price and wowza, that is expensive, which of course is one of the more expensive needs. In fact, it's the most expensive for our middle class. So we just put in a bunch of new trade routes to import this. So we should have a lot more sell orders coming in as the trade routes increase in size, which of course will drop the price of the clothing. Uh, but that's the American dream, baby. Um, we truly are just like cranking super, super hard on the wood in like a way that's disgusting. And we're getting so many new migrants, so many new pops that this is creating demands. And also when we de-peasant the pops, this greatly increases their demand for consumer goods. So um, we're just kind of exiting this sort of phase where we're trying to pivot. And I think we just got to do it. We just got to do it. It's going to be painful, but uh, we're going to say goodbye to the peasants forever, forever and ever. And say hello to uh, building several hundred logging camps into the abyss. Because we just want to make use of the constructor. Actually, this is probably stupid. This is probably a little too much. This is me just being too excited and just like humping the logging camps. This is too much. It's too much. Yeah, minus 37% cost on the softwood. And uh, let's find the hardwood. Well, the hardwood's not actually that cheap. Uh, this might not be the... This one might not be it. <laughs> the minus 37% cost on the 
on the soft food might be not it, uh, because it's not really depeasanting anyone anymore. <laughs> no one's getting depeasanted by this shit. <laughs> okay, so an adjustment we are making here is we are going for gantry cranes. We're still getting a ton of migration. Um, we also slotted in the tool company. We're keeping the wood company for now, uh, but we're still going to look to swap it out uh, in kind of a near-ish future. Um, I'll just do that one. Uh, and uh, we this is our current company lookup right now, uh, switching to the tools, especially now that we have uh, the rubber tools, uh, and we are going to try and export those tools. Now, I don't think those tools... Didn't we have all the trade routes? I guess we could make even more. Um, with the gantry cranes, we should be able to export a lot more of this stuff a little more aggressively. I guess we didn't... Oh, Japan must have got, got split open like a coconut. So we're going to try and get make use of that. Wowza. Wowza, wowza, wowza. I would have thought we already had tools at exporting. To be fair, a lot of this uh, root size is probably the result of us having additional convoys, which won't necessarily be the case, um, and is stuff that's maybe adjusting to a few uh, kind of changes we made. But now that their market, hey, 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 is open, uh, we will look to everything that's expensive. We're going to look to satisfy that, uh, especially, you know, the stuff we're really good at, which includes iron and the other stuff. Uh, and also, what we're going to do is we're going to import everything that they have nice and cheap. Because uh, this is a new development here, especially this. Big nice. And so uh, we should be able to kind of fix up the economy just to take a look at our trade routes. Uh, no, our trade routes. Uh, we should have some really big trade routes on the wood. Um, we still have several big ones on the on the glass. To be fair, maybe we're supposed to slot in a glass company. Yeah, the wood roots can't increase in size as much as we would want to be able to, uh, because so much is occupied by other stuff. Um, and so, when we get gantry cranes, this will give us a lot of additional convoys, which will allow us to keep our economy super unbalanced in the way that it is, which is disgustingly construction efficient, but if these places can't employ up, which, okay, looks like some of them can't employ up, some of them are just fine employing up, um, then we don't get the full benefit from the deep peasanting. But see this? This is a negative weekly balance. We are trying to rectify this, and we are trying to rectify this specifically by adding boats and uh, convoys and this sort of thing, because this will allow us to pull up the price of it, ideally. Although, it's not working exactly as well as we had hoped. This is why we're going gantry cranes, though. All right, so I knew that bankrolls were a little bit broken this patch, but they're super broken because they just like stick in for like forever now. Um, we've had this France one for what feels like the longest time. It's not cancelled by them going bankrupt. They probably are bankrupt by now. And we're about to get one from Austria-Hungary as well. You know, with our big heckin' big stick right here. You know, this 1k stack. They're like, no, please don't hit me with your huge stick. It's so big. And we just say, we speak softly and carry a big stick. And then we just come in here. And then we get the bankroll. And then we just get to construct infinitely. Um, which is kind of the story of, uh, the story of this episode so far which is that uh i mean that's a disgusting line that is disgusting look at that we don't we're not even we're like barely in the tier threes it's not like we hit like a tier four timing in terms of production tech and we're just popping off it's like what is this this is stick time all right so we have coming in gantry cranes with zero days left we're gonna go for uh, good old, uh, what is it, civilizing mission next, mainly because we want to build the canal, I suppose, actually, well, so here we have a little bit of a choice, actually, I think we'll actually go human rights, with the idea of going feminism afterwards, I think this will be pretty strong, we've also been waiting on the Antifagasta integration in order to put their company in instead of the wood company, so this is going to be the one we want to do, but we, of course, will do the big swap, that is right, the swapping everything onto, not everything, everything, but swapping all the uh, civilian ships onto uh, steamships, which is going to be great. Uh, it's always kind of a big swap. It's generally pretty strong. And so uh, we will also put all those on auto expand because it'll be pretty strong. And most importantly, we're swapping on to industrial ports here, which is going to go from, bring us from being around 10k convoys to 12k convoys. We should see all of our trade routes increase in size that we can see what we're spending uh, the convoys on here. And it's making our wood stuff work, really. Uh, well, I mean, it's making it work. I mean, it's working, it's working, but like, 
the the wood stuff is a bit of madness just pure pure madness but the company that we're planning on slotting in here uh, instead of the wood company look we've even lost or we're about to lose our prosperity bonus on wood that's so hard to do um, but the company we're going to be slotting in is going to be this company Compañía de Salitres y Ferrocarril de Antofagasta hopefully I pronounced that somewhat in the realm of uh, you know correct uh, which gives the very nice plus 5% infrastructure industrialist approval which is pretty nice because our industrialists are the only guys out of gov shout out to them and uh it is going to give us construction speed and throughput on these two uh which is going to be really well and i actually think it pairs decently with the very very strong u.s company of if we scroll down a little bit more i think it's just fine that we overlap some of these and go standard oil because the railway building throughput which we have on standard oil the railway throughput itself so we will be getting uh throughput uh let's see we will be getting 20 percent company throughput then an additional 10 percent company throughput for 30 percent company throughput from having two companies because it's multiplied by 1.5 the throughput bonus once we get to number one great power um so we will have 30 percent from that another 10 percent from our uh uh, kind of scrolling up from this company, uh, Carnegie Steel. So that's 40%, and then uh, another 20% from the whale railway building throughput here, so that's 60%. Uh, but on top of that, that's giving us infrastructure. That infrastructure will then be multiplied by 1.05% in order to give us an enormous amount of infrastructure per level of, uh, you know, a railway. So you generally kind of railways, they suck, but this makes it so we have to build way less of them. And so that's going to be really good, especially... Uh, and it's also going to make it easier to maintain the prosperity bonus because we, our railways will have 60% throughput. And while, uh, you know, this stuff is calculated, prosperity is calculated against all companies, not just companies of the same category, which is asinine. So our railways have to compete with like iron mines, for example. Um, the fact that each of these is paired with a mineral makes it a lot easier to maintain the prosperity bonus there as well well i think we're going to conclude the episode here this episode's just been kind of a whole ton of money moves um our market's gotten a little bit bigger here uh but the big thing is we're getting bankrolls from three people now which is now starting to become a, major, a huge chunk of our economy uh you can see we're getting 167k from each of austria hungary uh great britain up here and ooh, did the france one go away the france one looked like it went away hmm so we're not getting it from france anymore tragic uh suddenly we have to play the game in a, a bit of a normal sense um so we don't have the bankroll from france uh but we have you know i think we've like tripled construction roughly speaking maybe a little bit less uh gdp just did this absolute massive crank up this was this episode basically this like vertical line here very nearly and remember it's not the size it's the shape and the migration has really been coming through as well a ton um it's based on the average of incorporated territory as the terminal's gone away the incorporations come back up up, and a lot of these places have a really high amount, uh, not just because unused arable land, but because of available employment. And what is the available employment in, say, a place like Colorado? It's the chop chops. And so, uh, is this the the very best you know thing that we can do? Uh, you know, in some cases, not necessarily. Jeez, the price is so low in these places. Uh, just absolutely disgustingly cheap wood price. But we're exporting it kind of as best we can. Uh, and now that we've s slotted the company out, we don't have as big a glut. And we won't be building that much wood for a while now. So we'll probably switch to doing a lot more fish as a depeasanting method. As well as focusing in on the mineral resources and the mines which we have. Because we have, you know, the iron, the coal. We have the sulfur. We don't have the lead, unfortunately that's it is what it is and then we have the tooling workshop maybe there's some world where we go after uh belgium specifically for their tooling company which is probably the best in the game or even greece for the similar reason if we see an opportunity on either one we'd go for it um uh, but yeah that's this episode money moves getting ready for a war with china except for now that i think about it i think that us just uh going after and releasing the east india company from great britain's um control would actually just be much stronger because it would result in a whole bunch of countries that are going to have migration controls however if 
we roll the schism where they split into Bengal and all the other tiny little countries, which would be preferable with migration controls and a bunch of accepted pops, this would allow the exodus to start happening. So we probably should have done this earlier. We could probably do this pretty easy. And I think this might be what we go for next time. We'll have a little bit of a reflection on whether we want to try and cause massive turmoil in Great Shing, or if we want to go for um, East India Company. Notably, we don't have to land them because we have Tramancore as a subject, which we swayed at one point like a couple episodes ago um uh it, which is going to be quite nice because now we have a front and uh, we probably use the army of florida florida men sign up uh and i think that we actually would maybe mobilize this like 1k stack f for the memes uh, just absolutely massive and uh just trying to free the east india company from the uk i think is probably the way forward but we'll think about it anyways i hope you enjoyed if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe it does help out quite a bit uh especially notification bell do notification bell hell yeah brother and other than that have a nice day